Don't think I haven't noticed you sneaking around. The question is, how did you get past my charms? Well, since you're already here, I'm about to start work on a very special incantation. What do you think about sticking around? It would seem I've come in need of a new residence. I'm thinking something a little more remote. Maybe a little something like this. Some things simply need to be done the old-fashioned way. There's a magic in that too, you know. So, let's get to it. We're starting with the most magical material of all. Cardboard. Well, maybe just a little. Just a little magic never hurt anyone. Our witch's tree must sit on a hill. And to make that, we must first build a skeleton. Create a curved shape with cardboard and paperboard. The house needs a light to guide us home when it is dark, so we must thread some lights through the base. To surface the hill, we're using my favorite ingredient. Paper mache. Mmm, let's just speed the dry time up a little. Hmm. The best place for a witch's house is in the heart of a great tree. We must build our tree in very much the same way as the hill, creating the skeleton first, in a very similar manner, using paperboard and cardboard. Then we must frame the doorway to make sure we can enter and exit at our will. The base of the tree is quite bulbous, a bit like a pumpkin. The best place for a witch. Then, we must cover the bones with a first layer of skin. In this case, aluminum foil. Double, double, foil and trouble. Then, we must continue this journey skywards. The closer our tree can be to touching the moon, the better. The top of our tree is built of tiny trees. Or, in your words, twigs. Foraging is a very old and sacred magic. We only collect that which has already fallen. The forest lives and breathes just the same as most of us. You wouldn't want me chopping off your limbs, would you? Any good home must have windows. We'll cut those from the trunk of the tree and frame them just like the doorway. Of course, we can never forget about the most important part of the tree, its roots. The stronger the roots, the taller a tree can grow and the more life it can sustain. We'll twist some foil up to create some sturdy roots. And then, just like the hill, our tree needs a paper skin. Crafting follows a life cycle, just as you or me or the plants or the birds. The process runs its course only to begin again. This is the most important part because it is when we blend all things together to live in harmony. A tree, just like all living beings, only gains more character with age, which takes form in the patterns on its skin. So we must add another layer of paper mache mixture and draw its story upon its face, each line woven with a new tail. A front walkway may be built from cut pieces of some textured paper packaging. Once those are in place, we must start building the terrain. The environment around the house must be coated with a layer of grout to add the texture of many footfalls of the creatures that traverse this forest, pressing in pieces of the story of this land. Then we must begin to paint. A tree starts with a dark coat of brown laced with Mod Podge to seal the structure. I've heard whispers of this tincture from the word of many fellow warlocks, but they say it was originally formulated through black magic. On top, we'll layer it with coats of lighter and lighter dry brushing to catch the texture on the bark and reveal its secrets. The ground too must be coated with an earthly color and the stepping stones a bit lighter. The terrain gets a layer of fresh earth sprinkled like falling snow. To make our pathway bright 
and mystical, we need a layer of CT interference that will shift from green to orange depending on how you look at it. That's what I call magic. In the great season of autumn, our tree goes through many changes in which it sheds its colorful leaves. This is my favorite spell to cast. Tucking the leaves into their cozy crevices for a long autumn nap. Fall is a season full of much magic. Colors changing before your very eyes and the air turning from warm to cool upon your skin. Some plants begin to climb up the tree trunk, becoming part of it in natural synergy. If you simply look at your surroundings a little closer, there's a good chance you'll find all that you'd ever need. Let's make some room, just for a minute. All witches' houses need a portal so that one may pass from one world to another. This too is built from cardboard, layered on top with strips of paperboard to create a wooden facade. A frame is set around the opening, and then painted and worn in all manners of purple. The mystic color. All doors need a good handle, which gets conjured up from pieces of popsicle sticks and a jump ring. This gets painted gold and attached to the rest of the door. All wood, real or facade, must be sealed with a layer of matte Mod Podge to give it just that little bit of shine. A window of stained glass is created on plastic, painted with the plants of the forest in black and colored in with an alcohol-based marker. Stained glass texture is then stippled on with matte Mod Podge, which is finally set into the frame on the door. Witches spend a great deal of time coming up with new and strange enchantments. There are always those which may wish to steal our creations, so we must create frosted windows with diffusion paper. Then we'll set the door into its final resting place. Most importantly, we must protect our home with a series of charms. These must be painted by hand, never forgetting the magic sheen. They are threaded on string with beads so that they may speak to the wind and be imbued with the power of moonlight and hung from the limbs of the great tree. Our flying friends that nest in the trees drop feathers from time to time. These particular charms are extremely powerful in the forest and contain much freedom and wisdom. Speaking of our flying friends, they too create homes in the forest alongside ours. To help them out, we are using some gnarly acorn tops. Of course, found in the woods. Also from some acorns, we will build tiny jack-o'-lanterns for the season to ward away any wandering spirits. And keep watch for those pesky charm snatchers. The best home security system. The top of an acorn is cut with a most magical tool to be a bowl for collecting all sorts of forages. We'll fill that to the brim with herbs and trimmings. Finally, the doorway must be embellished with runes, though they also must be painted to become part of the tree. I don't know about you, but I think we should move right in. Thank you. 
That was fun, now wasn't it? <laughs> I shouldn't have to worry about as many guests wandering through. I can only imagine the work I'll get done in the quiet. The woods are great company, you know. Well, I'm sure you must be taking off, so I'll leave you well. But if you want to see how I conjured this space and my magical garb, I'll see you over on Patreon. Now then, until next time, my friend. Oh, you're still here? Not for long.